Hi, good afternoon, everyone. I'm here in Macau, waiting for everyone to, or most of the registration, uh, registrated attendees to come in. Um, my name is in the screen. I'm uh, Bruno Simões, uh, president of the um, executive board of MIS. Um, it's a pleasure to have you here all. Uh, we have about uh, 120 registrations for today. Let's see how many people logs in and participates. Um, I'm here together with Anna. Anna also works for MIS. Um, is next to me. She's helping with uh, the panel and so on. Maybe Anna, you can want to show and say hi. Hi. <laughs> All right, and um, we have uh, in Singapore, and I'll try to show Patricia. Patricia from PCMA is in Singapore. Maybe Patricia, you want to say hi to everyone? Hi, everyone. This is Patricia Shaw. Happy to join in this webinar with, with Bruno. All You'll right, hear from me right. a little bit more later. Yeah. All right. Yeah, Patricia will be doing part of this uh, presentation. So back to our agenda. Um, for those that don't know me very well, I've, I've been uh, more than 20 years in the industry. I've been in the side of the client as a marketing director, as innovation uh, manager. And in the last uh, more than 12 years, I've, I've been having my, my, my own business uh, based here in Macau and acting in the region. Um, and since uh, almost a year ago, I'm, I'm president of this association. I'll be also introducing the association. I'm also a, um, a member of PCMA and other associations in the industry. I don't know, Anna, once you feel we have uh, enough people logged in, I just wait a little bit more. 14, I think we can start in a few minutes. I don't know, Patricia, if you want to say anything, um, you're back in Singapore. Okay, sure. We uh, currently, the situation in Singapore currently, we're still, I think, in the middle of um, a lockdown. So a majority of us are actually working, working from home, as I believe the situation also in, in Macau. Right, Bruno? Well, Macau, Macau, we are, we've been very safe and very fortunate all the way through. Uh, no one died and um, the number of infected people were very, very small. I don't even know. I think it's about 60 or 7. 45. 45? Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I'm, <laughs> I'm not afraid of this virus. I'm a super optimistic person, I believe. Anyway, in Macau, we are, we are in a lockdown for, for a long time. Uh, we reacted very strongly initially by closing even the casinos for two weeks and so on. But in the last past months or so, we, nobody enters, nobody leaves. We are here. Instead of being at home, we are you know, locked in the whole city, which is quite nice actually. But in terms of business, in the business events industry where, where we act is, is quite dramatic. Yeah, so, but let's talk yeah. about positive things. I, I think um, I was talking about me just to say that this is my first webinar as a, as a host, as a presenter. I'll be turning 50 this year, so I'm not exactly an a IT and modern person. So please expect from me um, something that I, I would say that the, most of the people industry can, can do. And of course, this is an introduction to virtual events. So this, this is for those that are not that savvy with, with the topic. Um, okay. The agenda for today is, um, is the following. First, we will do a short introduction about uh, MIS and PCMA and, and mixed meetings. Uh, and then I, I will, I'll be doing a, um, an introduction about virtual events. Uh, I'll be doing a review of things I've, I've studied and researched. Then the same for media. And finally, I'll, I'll pass the word to Patricia that will be talking about uh, digital events education as, as PCMA is very strong in terms of education. And finally, we'll end up with um, some information about our next webinars and a debate. The debate will be in the form of uh, questions and answers. About MIS, our, our association is um, interesting is is not focusing in in um, is not focusing in exhibitions we we really focus on on besides meetings and incentives in special events this has been our positioning since the beginning 
our objectives. We are a Macau association, so uh, our members and our mission since the beginning has always been to promote, to get more business, to promote Macau as a, a business events destination. Uh, we are an English speaking platform, so we act uh, somehow in the region. We do have members from Hong Kong, from neighboring Zhuhai. We are not restricted only to Macau, uh, as Macau is more and more integrated with the region. Um, all right, so in terms of um, our virtual events and the introduction that was uh, promised by me, I would like to start by, by a video. Uh, just to remember that virtual events are not new. They have been in the market for a long time and I'm going to show you a, a video from 2014, isn't it? Yes. Just a second. Does it play? Right, I'll, I'll try again to show the video. Sorry for this glitch. All right, I'm afraid I cannot show this video. Anyway, this was um, um, a trade show in, in South Africa in 2014. It, this was an employment uh, um, trade show where, where attendees were looking for jobs and so on, very oriented for human resources. And, uh, the, and the event was a virtual reality uh, where, where, where an attendee could enter and visit different booths and so on. Um, well, regarding this, I also would like to, to share with you what, what I could find about virtual events. And you have here two companies, two players in the market that provide the platforms, event, I guess everybody, uh, quite familiar with and WorkCast. You can see that, uh, you know, they also orient the, the, um, the classification of, the, of events the way they, they, they work. Of course, WorkCast is more an IT company, so they all talk about virtual, virtual. And in case of C-Event, you can see that there are some uh, hybrid events and that this is, is quite uh, relevant uh, for, um, for them and for us, everybody in the market. I, I, I personally bring a, a virtual, an hybrid event that uh, we are working now. Uh, personally, we are working on this. So we do road shows in, in Greater China for uh, many years. For for is a B two B event where where you know importers, where um, people in the, in Asia, in Greater China, um, have the potential to buy wines from from Portugal. Uh, what happens now is that the, the, the Portuguese don't believe they will be able to travel to Asia for one reason or another. So we are working on a plan B. And a plan B is exactly a, a, an hybrid event. They will be virtually uh, presenting their wines. The wines can travel. They can come to, to China. Uh, but they can't travel to China. So uh, the wines will be shown virtually by, by the wine producers. And the people here in, in Macau, in, in Taiwan, in, um, in Guangzhou, in Shenzhen will be tasting the wine. Uh, there was, there's also another plan we are working it, uh, in, in, in case people in Asia cannot do events and gather. We are also considering to produce some uh, wine kits that will be shipped home. And then we can do a tasting like today. It's a, it's a kind of uh, online tasting. Where actually, you receive a kit with 10 different wines. You taste the wines and you talk with the producers individually or collectively um, about those wines. Um, I also would like to share um, a guide that Cvent prepared. It's quite useful. You, I'm, I share here also the, the link. You can find it online. You can download it also in PDF. It's quite interesting. And I've done here a collection of, um, uh, not a collection, but a summary of the most important topics. Um, of course, uh, I'll be talking about two or three. You can read as I speak. Um, this is, um, I highlighted the attendee engagement. This is, as usual, something very important. Preparing attendees is obvi obviously important because not, we are used to, to the real events, but we are not used to, to virtual events. So 
you really need to make sure that the message is, is, passes, is passes through. And also networking and connecting, which is why we do events, isn't it? So we're going to test here today um, an attendee engagement um, um, potential that Zoom, we are in Zoom, can, can allow. So uh, we'll be asking you a few questions also to know who, are in, who is in the other side. Uh, so Anna, can you just um, publish the questions? Sure. So the first one. All right. So we can give a few seconds. At this moment, I would like to ask you, how, how many people do we have? Um, At the moment, 81 plus the four of us. So 85 in total. All that's right. That's good. quite good. The table is shaking. <laughs> All right, I think we can publish the results and go quickly through the next question. Let's see who is in Macau. So replying, just give me one more second. So I'll end the polling now. All right. Very good. So we have a balanced uh, attendance uh, basically in these three major cities as we suspected, Hong Kong, uh, Macau and, and Singapore. Very good. I'm, I'm very happy with the Singapore results, uh, Patricia. Thank you. So I Thank think you. we can go to the next one. This is a private joke between us. <laughs> and um, so we would like to know where are you guys? Um, sorry. Next one. Sorry. Is uh, what do you do? In kind of business are you? I'm, I know I'm sure we would have some people here also from the government, but these were the major categories we, we could have, we could figure. I oh, think we're good. There's a lot of uh, industries that we didn't include it, so that's All right. a pretty good that's follow good. up to do. That's good. I think we can end now. Very good. Again, a balanced uh, result between the different categories. A lot of people from um, from the MCs, PCOs, hotels, venues, agencies, and uh, corporate clients. Very good. So this is the final question: Is uh, are you a one on one, or are you someone that has more experience? So can you post um, the question, please? This one is very easy, so I'm going to give you just a few seconds. This is my first one, don't be shy. <laughs> <laughs> very well, you can post, please. All right, yes, as, as we, most of us, we, we would expect, I mean, this is something new and, and it's, it's not difficult. I must tell you that in the last two, three days, I've learned a lot of things, lots of stress, but that's our life in events, right? Indeed. Very good. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. Well, preparing uh, attendees for a virtual event. I, I just brought you uh, here another personal, personal um, example. This is um, a daily kickoff is actually a kind of a team building employee engagement that, uh, Every morning you can play a game with, with your staff that is working remotely. And this is uh, like an instruction sheet. You have a QR code for them to download the game. You have the game um, app and so on. And you have a video link if they want to play a tutorial and so on. Easy. It should be fun. Don't forget. And also networking and connecting, the, something that I've highlighted. It's interesting that most of us would think that, well, this is virtual. You can never, you, you don't connect like, face to face like you do normally and shake hands and have a drink and you know spend more time with the people you you have a relation uh, you are more affinity with but in reality in in digital events you can do that you can classify people you can organize people in groups you can have them chat to each other you can chat you can send challenges for people with the same interested interests you can you, you can do breakouts and so on i mean you can always uh, Actually, you can even do more because you can push messages and so on. Um, next one, this is, well, uh, again, between Cvent and WordCast, I've, I've highlighted here two or three uh, questions. This is a summary of uh, 
their how to host a virtual event um, guidelines. I, I choose here, um, choose your platform. I'll, I'll be showing you here a website that compares many different platforms. Practice, practice, practice. I mean, uh, like in every event, but I think in, in when you use IT, you really need to, to, to practice more. We've practiced this, what, three, four times and still the video didn't play. Uh, it played when we, when we it tried. We, we all know about this, I guess. And I have this question here. What happens if you have connectivity issues? Uh, that was, that's something that happens just before we were doing a rehearsal and our connectivity here failed and we have to switch to our secondary Wi-Fi. But I think you need to have um, different Wi-Fi's, different ways to connect, of course. And again, the, the networking and uh, the schedule appointments is very important for most type of events. All right, let me see if I can jump into this website now. I hope so. All right. Yes, so I selected this website that has the comparison of many different platforms. Of course, we start here with big ones. Uh, in terms of costs, for instance, we have here Big Maker as a, a price per month. But in terms of costs, it all depends on, on your production. It's like an event. If you want a big production, you will pay 50,000 US. Or if you want just a simple production, it can be a few thousand. Or if you do a webinar like today, it can be really affordable. I think we are under, under 50 US to do this. Um, depends on, on the... Um, how many people hosting and so on, but um, an event uh, webinar can be really cheap. Uh, webinar jam, Zoom, you have here the price for Zoom. Um, Vimeo, for those that, uh, those that uh, know, they are also in this uh, field and so on. I mean, you have so many options here, um, just for you to get an idea, even uh, Adobe. You have big brands as well in this um, in this area, and then you have here page two. You will have also want to show you Workcast is one of the things I was showing you. Spot me for those that know this this app is a very strong app that is strong in networking, in in trade shows, in big events. V fairs, obviously, someone strong in the in the fairs. You also have Cisco. Cisco is probably um, Cisco WebEx, one of the first uh, tools in this area and so on. Six Connect, another big player. I think you need some time to compare. Um, I use also the Event Bible. Uh, it's, it's a PDF you can download that compares a lot of apps, a lot of websites. I also recommend that one if you want to compare them. Um, well, I want to show a virtual event by Google done last year, a, a presentation. Let me see if it works, the video. I guess it doesn't. Well, I'll be sending this presentation, it will be available, so you, you can then uh, try it on um, at your home. This is, this is a well done uh, virtual event where you can actually navigate in a, in, in a kind of virtual exhibition, uh, breakouts, conference, and so on. Um, and and uh, by the way, since I just did a review, it was a news yesterday or a couple of days ago that Meet, this is Meet is the Zoom from Google, was made free for everyone. This is probably not available around the world yet. They, they promised that they will be releasing in the next few weeks uh, in different regions, in different countries. But I think this is uh, good news. Uh, Google is probably one of the IT leaders of the world and they are having a free Zoom, which is fantastic. And um, the next one is about media. I'll, I selected a few articles. This is the first one. Obviously, creativity and making a difference is, is uh, very, very important. And um, I think we should take that in consideration. Oops, sorry. Uh, I need to click in the website again. Well, this article focuses in two or three interesting things. I, I must say that conference and incentive travel, this website you need to register beforehand. It's, it's free, free access. But uh, as you can see, I've registered before. I've followed them for, for many years already. I mean, like, like in everything in our industry, you need to put people first and think about them. Use the, your, your attendees' shoes and uh, think like they would like to... to what they would like to have, what they appreciate, and, and so on. 
learn from the digital world. I mean, um, digital world, we, we even uh, those that were, you know, afraid of it uh, in the past is now very common to everyone. Get physical. I, I like this one. I mean, you can encourage people to walk. I mean, um, sometimes we do events where we ask people to just move yourself and, and, and stretch. Why not? It's digital, but you don't really you don't necessarily need to be sit down and stand looking at the screen all the time. Encourage networking. This is a topic that we already discussed here. Uh, super important. This is why we, we do events uh, in, in most of the times, I would say. And bring fun. Um, I know I'm, I can be a very monotonic um, speaker, but um, other speakers probably can be more fun. And uh, that's quite um, recommendable and um, important. Uh, next one, I'll, I'll probably can, can skip this one once you, you, you download the, the, um, the presentation if you are interested. This, this talks more about the techie savvy uh, uh, people and they talk a little bit about uh, the technology. Another article by the same uh, magazine, I, I think this one is quite complete and I would like to review. In reality, it, it goes uh, quite a lot in line what we have seen from, from uh, C-Event and, uh, and the other website that I, I just did the review. Here we can see that everybody's drinking from the same uh, sources. Um, I mean, turning presentations into conversations. Actually, this is, this is quite interesting. Um, you know, the, the, the audience can be sometimes closer to the speaker uh, using technology because if you have a room with 500 people, 1,000 people, probably you can't ask a question, you know, uh, as directly and as personal to the speaker as you could do with technology. Um, flexibility, add value. Again, virtual networking is, uh, networking is, is mentioned many, many, many times. Digital roundtables, again, you know, the breakouts and the possibility to have a lot of people then branching out and, and, and uh, meeting in, in smaller uh, scale. Uh, gamification, of course, if you do digital events or uh, virtual events, gamification is super important. Speed networking, and then again, networking is, is, um, is mentioned. Push notifications, virtual exhibits. I, I, I think they, they focus really here on, on techniques that would make your, your your audience is more engaged. Uh, this article, I, I like it very much. Uh, it's a bit American, but in a way, it, it tries to, to give us some tips how to behave in virtual meetings. And um, I find it quite interesting. I was just before calling my dog is here. Um, she sometimes, uh, this author um, kind of recommends uh, don't never, uh, just don't show up to a meeting. I mean, uh, she recommends ask questions, uh, provide insights when appropriate. I mean, you know, digitally, even if you are shy, you can just send messages you know, in chat to the, to the um, organizers. You can ask questions and so on, even if you are shy. And um, if you can learn a lot with the questions and answers. So don't simply watch the seminar, but you can watch the, the, the questions and answers that are going on. And then it, it's, this is when, you, when it becomes a bit American. Um, uh, let your dog on your lap for a few minutes, you know, be personal. Uh, design your Zoom corner like we did here today. We did some production here to, to, to have a perfect uh, setup. Um, you be a little bit casual and take notes, you know, record your sessions, follow up. I mean, this, I, I really like these suggestions here as how to make a difference in, um, in virtual meetings. And uh, finally, um, I got this article from a, you know, a very business oriented magazine and, um, and University Harvard Business Review. The Zoom fatigue, I mean, you can see that Zoom is quite a standard and it's used a lot, mostly in the US. And it's interesting that a uh, university like Harvard has, has a study already. This is from um, 29 April, and it focuses on, on questions that, uh, you know, um, actually the human, uh, the human interaction with the screen and with something that is uh, uh, like we are doing now 
is, is uh, very, very different, is very intensive. You know, avoid multitasking. Oh, of course, I know most of you are, are um, tired of listening to me and they are already reading messages on, on uh, WhatsApp, probably reading emails, uh, talking to the colleague or to the family member next to it. You know, but you still can build breaks and so on. So this article is quite um, reduce the, the screen uh, stimuli. Uh, another interesting tip. Um, it's interesting if you go online, you can find a lot of um, a lot of um, recommendations and a lot of information about how Zoom and how you know the, the new virtual events can be tiring and can be intensive. And I think it's now time for me to stop sharing the screen. I'll pass to Patricia that is based in Singapore. Go on, Patricia, please. Hi, okay. Thanks for that. Let me share my screen. All good? Well, hello everyone. My name is Patricia Cho and I'm Associate Director for PCMA Asia Pacific. First of all, let me thank Bruno once again and of course Mace for giving me this opportunity to share with you the digital events education programs that PCMA has to offer. As you know, PCMA's top industry priority currently is to help the global business events industry to navigate the current challenges that are presented by the COVID-19 outbreak. We remain very dedicated to providing the essential resources and credible factual information for the business event stakeholders, what they need to help them to make the best decisions and then to lead them through the recovery. The PCMA Digital Experience Institute, or DEI for short, was set up to advance engagement in the digital events space, supporting education and learning within the digital event community. Producing a successful digital event has never been more important to our industry as, as compared to now, as Bruno has uh, mentioned earlier on, um, and also through the polling, we also realized that 76% um, of, of the attendees currently do not have any experience in organizing virtual, uh, virtual events before. So there is a high need for education. So under DEI, P PCMA has created two digital events education courses. The first being Digital Event Strategies course, or DES for short, and that allows um, a comprehensive toolkit for anyone who is interested to look at how to plan and produce as well as measure results of digital events. The second product that we created, it's called the Digital Event Fast Track. And what this is, is to accelerate the user's abilities by curating the core lessons that are found in DES certification course and this will allow the, the participants to develop a plan to build strong support team as well as to deliver this content as well as the engaging experience which we also were discussing earlier on the difficulty in engaging a digital audience as compared to a face-to-face -face event. But all these through the fast track is available on a shortened timeline. It will help any event organizers to jumpstart the design and execution of any digital event. Who might be interested in possibly um, this digital event education? So here are some examples of business events professionals who will benefit from attending a DES or a fast track course. So we're looking at people like event marketers, uh, the corporate planners, the association events um, meeting professionals, freelancers, third party uh, agencies, as well as um, event sales team members, basically who want to better understand their clients and the needs um, that they're looking for in terms of the digital space. The full DES course, it's a 10 module course um, listed here with a course overview. This, this is available self-paced. Um, all 10 modules will clock in, will allow anyone to clock in 14 continual education hours and um, it equips you with this end-to-end know-how on how to organize live streams or digital events. It offers certification, so anyone who completes the 10 modules and takes an examination after the, after the completion will then graduate as a DES certified 
professional. On the other hand, the fast track, so depending on your experience level, the fast track program can be taken in sequence through five lessons. Or you can select lessons that you find most relevant to your business needs. So lesson one we've picked, it's on strategic planning. Lesson two on user experience and engagement. Lesson three, content strategy, creation and delivery. Four is on building the environment, the digital environment. And of course, five is planning the live event itself. And as part of the digital events resources that we have put together, PCMA members have access to the media library, which houses all of DEI on-demand sessions. And this covers a wide variety of topics. DEI webinars are also available free. You just have to register yourself. And anybody who is attending any of the DEI webinars will also be able to clock in the continual education credits. Next, I would just like to um, touch briefly on the upcoming webinar that PCMA is jointly organizing with NIST, and this happens next week on the 13th of May, next Wednesday at 5 p.m. on the topic of pivoting your event from live to virtual. As you know, with the COVID-19 driving face-to-face -face events online, how do you make this immediate pivot towards digital while ensuring that online experience meets and exceeds the participants' expectations. We welcome you to register and to join us for this webinar and allow yourself to gain a foothold on the digital environment and the keys to designing for peak audience engagement online. Leading this session is Darren Chakri. Darren is our Regional Vice President for Hong Kong, Macau and Taiwan and also the Chair for the Marketing Society and he will be facilitating a discussion with two key industry players in the region. Deborah, Deborah Caldwell is the Senior Vice President for Asia Pacific Events Marketing um, for Bank of America, Merrill Lynch and Luisa Galindo who is the Business Development Manager of the Economist Intelligence Unit. So, what are some of the learning points that we hope that participants for next week's um, webinars would be able to take away? How to define audience engagement and expectations for digital events? How to understand the digital environment and how it impacts and affects the engagement experience? And how can you develop techniques for online participant engagement? With that, I've come to the end of my very short session. Um, please feel free to reach out to me. This is my contact details. If you have any questions at all about PCMA, what we could do for you about DES, um, please feel free to reach out to me. Oh, I want one more thing I forgot to mention earlier on. Next week's webinar, we are also um, providing remote simultaneous interpretation. So there will be a Mandarin translation as well for any um, one who is more comfortable about, about the, post, um, the actual webinar to be conducted in Mandarin. So that's available for next week's session. So with that, that's at the end of my sharing session. I will now pass the thing back over to you, Bruno. I think you need to stop sharing. Yes. Yes, I just did that. Thank you, Patricia. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Sorry, I need to click here. Yes. Thank you, Patricia, for your sharing. Yeah, just uh, we were basically, we, we finished our uh, webinar almost, just a couple of slides more and a question more. So Patricia just presented our next Wednesday on the following Wednesday on the 20th of May, always at the same time, five o'clock, we'll be having a virtual team building. This will be presented by uh, Johnny Etzer is based, is based in, um, in London, but he runs uh, this team building app across the world in um, about 35 companies in 25 different countries or regions. So I think it will be an uh, interesting experience for you to understand how different regions, how different uh, companies are reacting to this new possibility because three months ago, uh, this would be very difficult to implement or to sell. Um, well, we go now to questions and answers. Um, please use the Q&A. We, we, uh, we are not using raise your hand. 
So Anna is next to me, and Anna and also Philip um, uh, next to, to Patricia in Singapore. We will be uh, trying to select some questions that we will be asking, and we will be discussing them. them. This would be for about 10 minutes approximately, depends on how many questions we will have. Uh, I don't know, so on the, on the bottom of your um, Zoom, you will have questions and answers. Maybe we can ask one of our sponsors to ask a question and support us. I personally, let me see if I can see it better. All right, everybody's shy. Um, I think maybe I can, in the meantime, share our experience with Zoom. Um, I, I think um, for those that are not famili familiar at all, you, you can run Zoom as you probably have done before uh, as a meeting. It's a simple meeting where everybody can show up with a camera on or off, uh, with um, your microphone or not. But remember, you can also do it and you can do breakouts with the meeting. So you have a meeting with maybe 50 people, 100 people, 20 people, and then you can break out them in, in different groups and they continue the meeting in different rooms as we would do in a normal, in a normal um, conference. Uh, and a webinar, uh, the difference between a webinar and a meeting is that in a webinar, you actually enroll, you register, and, and then you, you participate, uh, you, you get in into the webinar, and you are not so much, we can control if you can speak and so on and show up. So I think Anna has already a question to, to show me. Let me see if I can see it in my screen here. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, I have Stephanie, Stephanie Lee here asking, this question was asked to me just a couple of hours ago. Well, if I knew that, I would be very rich. Uh, the question is, how do you see the event industry will resume back to normal in the Asia Pacific? I, I think no, nobody knows. And I think this uh, outbreak as, as this pandemic has surprised everyone, every single one from Donald Trump to Bruno here. <laughs> so I, I don't know, I don't know. I have no idea. I hope things will get better. I'm always a very positive person. And then Luis Pereira, Luis Pereira is actually a good partner of us. He's from AG Brief. AG Brief uh, is, um, is a publishing company in the gaming industry that also does uh, conferences in the region. Can you share your thoughts about converting real life events such as conferences into a digital event? Thank you. Well, um, I believe it's possible. I believe it will happen. I, I'm more, I'm more, um, I think we will go uh, hybrid many times because you can still have a, a band playing uh, a panel instead of having Bruno, we could have a panel here. Uh, we can taste wine, these kind of things. I, I think it makes more sense uh, to, to have a hybrid events where a part is physical and the other part is online. Anyway, I think the, the, the virtual events have a lot of potential in terms of networking, in terms of data, because everybody logs in, you know exactly what everyone has done and so on. And you can actually make people network, you can actually communicate with every single one in a different way or with different groups in other ways. So I think that the industry will change a lot. I, I don't know about you if you want to say something, Patricia. Um, yeah, I, I do think that it's it's different now. It's no longer the same. Um, and I was about to also answer uh, the earlier question about what when we expect the, the normal to to resume. Um, even we believe that even if if borders start to open up and um, we start to slowly conduct these events, things will never be the same. It would not revert back to what it used to be termed as normal. So that's where we, we believe that it's necessary for us to now look at what, what, is, what is the new normal. Face-to-face um, -face events, is that, it, is that going to be purely face-to-face -face events eventually, or are we looking at hybrid events? Uh, where, where does the space um, come in? What's the necess necessary skill set that is, ne that is needed um, to prepare yourself for this, for this new future? Yeah. 
Hi, I'm, I'm back on track. I think we have a question from Martin. Martin is the editor of Mixed Meetings, uh, also our media partner. Um, yes, Anna. So Martin dropped in the chat the following question. Do you believe webinars will eclipse live meetings? Is it the case that webinars won't fully take over, but how far will they? I really don't believe I'm, I'm, um, I'm a person that um, I remember the 9-11 and, and how in the US uh, meetings and all sorts of events were, were basically forbidden by the government and, and how, you know, the industry and the people, they fought for the events to get back and they were quite uh, back on track very quickly because business needs uh, personal interaction. Humans need interaction. Humans are not... We are not uh, virtual people. We, we live in groups. We like to socialize. We feel happy when we socialize. We feel better to do business with people we know and so on and so forth. So I think virtual will help uh, in many situations, but they will not eclipse. That's my personal opinion. I, I don't know again, Patricia, you are in the panel as well. I'm, I'm with you on that. I, I do not believe that virtual will ever replace that human connectivity. And that's the whole essence of business events, that the whole, yeah, the whole essence is behind it is the, the connection, the human connection. But how we can use virtual events, digital events to extend the experience and to look for greener fields out there is something that we, 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 sh we should be expecting. So yeah, back to that question, I don't believe that it will ever replace um, that face-to-face that, uh, -to -face event totally. Yes, we have another, another question here from Victoria, Victoria Mann. I hope I pronounced correctly. Can you talk, and the question is, can you talk about the experience about sponsorship of virtual events? Is it easy for sponsors to accept virtual events when we always get used to promote it in land-based event? Uh, if you don't mind, Patricia, I'll, I'll pass this to you. You guys <laughs> are the kings of sponsorships. <laughs> kings of sponsorships, an interesting comment. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, I, I think the biggest, the biggest challenge right now is how do you monetize your virtual events? That's the biggest challenge right now for any event organizers to want to put, um, put up a virtual event or a digital event. Um, yeah, so, so there, there, there needs to be more, more, um, research, um, and collaboration to see how we can actually monetize it. Um, and, and to the question on how do you then create that sponsorship, sorry, the experience for your sponsors. Um, I think it's a matter of working with your sponsors because, because right now the, the question is, there is no face-to-face -face events. So virtual, virtual events, it's what's happening right now. And sponsors still need to have that, that um, engagement with their, with their audience, with their target, with the target audience. And it's how you can work with a sponsor to create the engagement and experience despite it being um, in, the, in the digital space. I hope that answers the question. Yeah, I, I, I have a feeling that sponsors tend to believe that a uh, virtual event is much cheaper to produce than, than, um, than a real it, event, uh, a real life event. It depends. It really depends. Because if you really want to go into a full scale production that, that can really go up, the cost um, can really should really up. Um, so it really depends. So it's not, doesn't mean that okay, um, we put something up in, in Zoom. Um, it, it depends on what, just, what is your expectation of, of the event itself. Um, like you rightly pointed out, the infrastructure, do you need that to ensure that your uh, broadband network is stable enough? Do you need to have your microphones there? Do you need to have it produced properly? Do you actually have the backdrop prepared as well? So those are a lot of investment into ensuring that um, the quality of the digital event doesn't get diluted just because it is digital. All right, uh, we have another question here from an anonymous um, person. Um, it's about manpower, asking if uh, virtual events use uh, 
of manpower is less than a, a real event, obviously it's much less. <laughs> We don't prepare banquets, we don't, uh, we don't do registrations manually and so on, but it all depends, as, as we mentioned before, it all depends on the type of production you are looking at. So if you're, if you're looking at, uh, you know, a big production, uh, then it actually can be as expensive as just Patricia just mentioned. Uh, I think we have another one here from, um, from a local person in Macau, Luis Almuster is a Portuguese name, I actually know him. He's asking if, uh, considering the, the situation of Macau and the high numbers of infections in the region, if some events will be transferred to Macau. Uh, I hope so, because I'm based in Macau. <laughs> I, I, we don't know, again, it all depends on, on how Macau is going to, you know, to pass the message. Uh, for instance, I know that Singapore, has already a campaign to certify hotels in terms of uh, cleaning less and disinfection and so on. This is something that in Macau we should be working already. So we should assure our visitors that Macau not only could, you know, stop the virus uh, uh, to come in, but also we are well prepared to keep our infrastructure and our and our um, venues and so on very clean. And, and I think no one is taking care of that. So again, uh, Let's hope we, we receive uh, uh, guests, by, not only by the price, but also by the, the quality we have here. I don't know, Anna, do we have uh, further questions here, maybe from the, from the chat? No. Handsome, yeah, handsome. Oh, hi, handsome again, uh, another friend from, um, from Hong Kong and Macau. As an event builder, how can we survive if all seminars go virtual? Well, I think um, before you have invested in, uh, in booths and, and, and dif dif different tools for physical uh, building and production, I think like everyone now, we should, should consider to invest in, in other type of tools and, and get prepared for those hybrid events, invest more in, in, in technology. It doesn't mean that we, we need to, to to have our own apps. Uh, now the trend is to have um, to hire apps as we need, and I, I think it's quite cost effective. But again, I'm, I'm quite positive that we will have uh, a lot of hybrid events. Um, but for the time being, I, I, I think it's it's a difficult uh, position we are all now. Thank you, handsome. There's one more question from the chat from Kavi. The question is, you think virtual events will be part of Macau's driven diversification? Well, uh, I have my doubts. I mean, Macau has no um, IT background. We don't have much developers here and so on, but I'm sure we'll find a way. I'm sure we will find a way to adapt. And uh, many companies here are owned by uh, and run by young people. So that's the most important thing is the attitude. And I have another question here from Sam Yoon. Sam Yoon, I, I guess, from, from Korea. Uh, design your tour, if I well remember. In this given situation, virtual event may be in its great need. Can you see many requests, which is more than, more than your expectation? To be honest, uh, we don't have uh, much requests. We are starting now to pushing for virtual events uh, and uh, virtual team building in our case. Um, I think at the moment we are we are on a freeze. It's like freeze. We are not doing anything. So um, you know, the, there's there's no news. There's no action. So I think the whole industry in Singapore, in Hong Kong, uh, might not be exactly the case of Korea that you guys are ahead of us. We are all on hold. We are waiting. Let's see uh, how the the economy is going to unfold. Is going to get out of this. Um, out of this situation. So once companies start to see, okay, we are seeing the, we, we saw already the bottom uh, line. So let's see how can we, how can we do, what can we do? Can we do virtual? Can we do real events? I, I think it's, it's coming very soon. Once we open our, our borders and start, you know, socializing, I think virtual events will come and the need for them will come. So we need to prepare now in the, in these next few weeks. I think we're good. Uh, we're 45 minutes almost a bit past. I, we have just two more questions before you guys leave us. Um, 
in the pool we have another live pool so please rate our webinar um, and we have a final question um, please be honest with us yeah that's the only way to improve we're, we're, we appreciate if you're kind but honesty is also very appreciated Oh, Max, Max is making some noise now. <laughs> I think we're very good. good. I think we're good. Can Thank you show you. please the results? All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate your your comments. And um, we have one more question. The last question is not actually in the screen, but we would like to know. Um, Who's planning to do virtual events? So this is a question we thought about while the, the, the event was going on. After we, we got the, the, the answer in the beginning that most people, um, most people was not, um, didn't do any virtual event yet, yet. So we thought that this could be a question and this could be something that the technology companies and so on could be interested to know as well. Still running, still yeah, going still up. Running. I know, how many people do we still have online? Can we, we still have online 72. 72 people. I think we, we picked at uh, 90, 90, 92 yeah. people. And then we lost about five people that probably had something else to do. And we still have 70 people online. This is, this is the beauty of uh, the, the virtual events that we have all this data and um, constant monitoring. That's it. You can publish, please. All right, so I think uh, most of us are, are into the um, virtual events. I, I think uh, most of us have no choice anyway. All right, I think we're, we're about to close. This is our last slide and um, I really appreciate your time today. And I hope to see you next week uh, when um, TCMA will host our next webinar. I'm sure it will be very interesting. Uh, the panel is fantastic and I'll be there as well. So. Thank you very much, everyone, and uh, thank you, PCMA, Patricia, and Philip, for your great support. Anna, here was a bit stressful, but you. Thank you. Thank you very <laughs> thanks much, Anna. Everyone. Thanks, Bruno. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Yeah.